Hello, everyone. Um, oops. Hold on a second. There we go. Um, I wanted to give you a little lecture as we're starting a new unit on creative nonfiction. But before we start, um, just to do some housekeeping things, I'm almost done um, going through your fiction stories. So by, I would say, midweek, um, you should all have that back with all my comments and feedback. Um, additionally, you'll have your test graded before midterms so that you know um, where you stand with that uh, before spring break. Um, probably before um, next week, too. But as I said, I'm going away um, to read my poetry at the University of Louisville this week. Um, but I will try to get all of that back to you before then. Um, I've loved reading your stories. I think they're so great. And I've tried to recommend um, at least one other story that I think fits in with the, something about your story, whether it be your point of view or your plot um, or your theme. So I hope you'll read those um, before you begin your revision. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. We can talk on the phone. We can have a Skype conference. Um, anything that you want, if you're a little confused please let me know. Um, also with regards to peer comments, I thought a lot of you did a really great job. Um, I'd like to point out Carol Ann's comments in particular as being really strong. So um, if you're curious about um, how you can improve your peer comments and feedback, look at what I did on your drafts, um, how in depth I went talking about um, what you could improve on and what's working also with your stories and um, look through some of the peer comments on your of your peers and also looking at your own story and looking at the feedback think about which um, comments helped you the most and how you can do the same thing for your peers in the future <clears throat> okay so let's start talking about creative nonfiction. And although um, this is kind of a relatively new genre in especially creative writing schools and the academy and things like that, um, it's been a um, genre that's been around probably from the 1500s and before. Um, and it began with um, someone who's considered to be the grandfather of creative nonfiction, Montagna, who um, really started writing down per his personal reflections of, of the world around him. Uh, but this occurred e even before that with the lives of philosophers, going back to um, even ancient Greece and things, but we'll go into it a little bit more. Um, so what is it? <clears throat> Here's a quote from Lee Hunt. He's a poet from the Romantic period. I think a few of you said you really like the Romantic period. So do I. Um, but his quote is, There are two worlds. The world that we can measure with line and rule, and the world that we feel with our hearts and imaginations. To be sensible of the truth of only one of these is to know the truth by halves. Um, and this quote is important because this is exactly what creative fiction, nonfiction is trying to do. Um, it's trying to blend the world we feel with our hearts and imagination with this real world, the world we can measure by line and rule. It's more than just recording facts. It's about adding that other layer um, of the hearts and the imagination into it. Um, so there are two parts. Obviously, creative involves being original, inventive, um, also to be creative is um, what we involves what we call the promise of play. Um, so that means your imagination might wander. And the way that this is done in nonfiction is not through adding fictional elements in or anything like that. It's through language, through beautiful language um, with real emotion. And nonfiction, of course, is true. And that's an important thing to remember with creative nonfiction is that it must be true. Of course, you might invent um, specific words. For instance, if you're using dialogue, you're not going to remember exactly um, what the person said. So you might invent some dialogue. You might also condense by... Um, you know, combining some of the people in your life into one figure. But to make up whole things is really frowned upon. I don't know um, if any of you remember um, the memoir Million Little Pieces, which was on Oprah by James Fry, and he it turned out he had invented or made up a lot of that, and it was a huge scandal, and he lost all of his credibility, and, and people stopped buying his book. Um, so while creative nonfiction writers might invent some things, they're not the major things. 
Um, so remember, it's a focus on truth, even though we bring the creativity of our language um, and we mold that truth in order to speak to something larger um, for other people. And, and that's the important thing, um, is that when we write creative nonfiction, we're not just kind of writing a diary entry um, for you know, ourselves or our moms to read or something. We're writing something um, where we want to make someone who's never met us, probably will never meet us, um, which is the nice kind of nice thing about this class is that, you know, we won't actually meet each other so we can see what an audience who doesn't know us might think. Um, but so how can I tell, for instance, you all a story about my dog or something and make you care, make you want to read that? Um, of course, there's a certain voyeuristic thing that we all have where we want to peek into someone's life, especially um, their vulnerable or funny parts. But the reason we want to do this is because we want to see ourselves there. Either see ourselves there or see ourselves not there, see something else that isn't us. But we want to get something deeper out of this than just um, a report of someone's life. So part of how you do that is to let the objective and subjective come together to describe the real world. So, of course, you're going to be subjective, especially about yourself um, and the world, about what you think is beautiful, about what you think is important, but also to be able to step back and objectively look at what's happened will help your reader to engage on that level because, of course, they're going to be um, more objective to what you've been through than you are. So to be able to kind of step out of your shoes and capture a glimpse of the real world, that's what we want from creative nonfiction, is something real to connect with us. Um, another way to do that is to use your eye wisely. So confess something in order to allow your reader to understand the world more deeply, as I've mentioned, not just you. Um, because they may or may not care to understand you more deeply. They want to understand you in order to understand something about the world. Um, you can be the protagonist of your story. You can be a bit player. You can write about... Um, as I mentioned, I might write about my dog where I'm just a bit player in the life of my dog who actually is a really bad and annoying dog. Well, she's cute, but she's kind of bad and annoying. So I might write about her um, in a kind of comical way in order to kind of get at what it means to be human, but I'm not the center of the story my dog Dolly Parton would be. So um, it doesn't have to be really personal. Of course, if you feel inclined to write something really personal or about yourself, feel free. You can write whatever you want. But if you feel a little bit uncomfortable about that, um, it doesn't have to be about you. It doesn't have to be something personal that happened to you. But it has to be true. And part of this, you can, you can even get at this through research too, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, also, creative nonfiction has an engaging and unique voice. It's not formal. It's not like an essay that you would write for um, composition or another class, although you should have a unique voice in those too. But it is about being yourself, speaking as you are, um, embodying your page. So filling the page with you as much as possible so that the reader can hear you and engage with you. And pay attention, there are four creative nonfiction pieces you're going to read this week. Pay attention to how each of the writers in do that, how they get themselves onto the page. Um, some other thoughts about creative nonfiction is, here's a quote from Ger Gerald N. Callahan, creative nonfiction fills a niche that will never be filled by either fiction or traditional nonfiction about the things that can happen to people in real time and the ways those things change us a day or decade later. So nonfiction, again, just reports the facts, traditional nonfiction. Fiction gives us these kind of larger themes which speak about human experience, universals. Um, fiction has a purpose to kind of connect with us and make us feel more human too. But nonfiction is about real things that happen in the real world and how we can ga gather some kind of theme or importance or meaning from those. So it is like fiction in the way that there is this larger theme, but it goes even deeper because we can connect to the reality of the truth there. Um, and 
when you're thinking about this, you may be saying, oh, I don't have anything that interesting. Maybe you have really great, interesting things that happen to you um, or your grandmother or someone you know. Have people tell you stories. That's a great way to find this. Um, but also a great thing is to find the extraordinary and the ordinary. Maybe there's just a story about you walking through the rain, but but where can you find the truth and the extraordinary um, nature of that moment in order to say something larger about how we are as human beings? Also, have an allegiance to the truth. Try this the best way you can to speak the whole truth about the event, even if you have to fill in blanks um, because you don't remember completely. Try to capture the truth because the truth is very important in creative nonfiction. Um, so, lastly, for this time, and, and we're gonna, we have a while to, to study creative nonfiction. We'll go more in depth with each of these genres, and we'll learn some terms and things like that. And I'll give you more exercises to start getting you going. Um, but some subgenres to start thinking about are memoir. Um, I'm sure some of you have read some memoirs. Um, usually they're book length, um, little slices of memory. They work different than biography because a biography will kind of go from birth to not death the person doesn't die but to a certain period of time um whereas or an autobiography whereas a memoir will be kind of slices of different memories <clears throat> a personal essay some people think personal essays are kind of parts of the memoir but they work in in a similar way as the memoir it's kind of a larger truth connecting a moment um so one moment that you you connect into a larger theme another Subgenre is a portrait. Um, a portrait is where you make someone other than the eye come to life. So you might have a portrait of your grandfather, um, for instance, or something like that, uh, that you want to paint. And remember, it's not just to kind of help people get to know your grandfather, but, but something deeper. Um, another subgenre is an essay of place. Um, this captures a setting. I wanted to read you a little passage by E.B. White. Um, where he describes a thunderstorm on a lake, and this invokes kind of familiar childhood feelings. So, one afternoon while we were at the lake, a thunderstorm came up. It was like the revival of an old melodrama that I had seen long ago with childish awe. This was the big scene, still the big scene. The whole thing was so familiar, the first feeling of oppression and heat and a general air around camp of not wanting to go very far away. Um, and this is from Once More on the Lake, and we kind of get this idea of, of place and of movement. Um, so if you have a place which feels really significant and important to you, you might consider that. Um, another subgenre is an opinion essay. This is like an editorial. We read those all the time. Um, someone giving their opinion on something that's happening currently in our culture. Also narrative journalism, which we see through um, people like Norman Mailer or um, Hunter S. Thompson um, or any other narrative journalists who are, are publishing today where they kind of tell a story. Um, through their journalistic approach of, of covering something about the world or about the culture. Um, the last subgenre is the lyric essay, which is a newer form where um, people are really trying to capture an emotion. So it may move from one um, a description of place to a description of the grandmother to a description of something else and all of these things are kind of interconnected in some way um, but it's more poetic than the other forms um, and it's really meant to capture an emotion um, in the way that poetry kind of captures the indescribable um, of what we feel and experience that's what the lyric essay attempts to do and, and we'll read some examples of um, various parts of these throughout so that being said um, and we just kind of tapped on it a little bit but um, what I'd like you to do for your discussion post this time around is to locate and describe a piece of creative nonfiction and share it with the class so what's working in the piece and also think about which of those subgenres that I mentioned does it fit into. This may take you, for instance, if you're, if you're a little confused on one of them, doing a little extra research um, to figure out which subgenre it fits into. Um, but just, you know, maybe post a link to the piece, uh, explain it to us, give us a summary, and then connect it to our lecture 
that we've just had. Um, and again, if you have any questions about your fiction comments that you got back, any questions about anything with the class, um, please just send me an email. Like I said, I, I'll even, if you're located close to here, we can meet on campus for coffee or um, have a phone call or whatever. So have a great week, and I will be talking to you soon.